So, Queens, I have Heather. Is it Heather Lay or Heather Lai? Heather Lee. Heather Lee with me today, and I'm extremely excited and anticipating this conversation. So, Heather, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners? Yes, I am Heather Lee Strom. I'm an author and a galactic canine channel. Wow. And so let's dive straight in with 10 quick fire questions, and then we'll go into all the juice that I have ready for you to ask. Number one, what's your go-to karaoke song and why? <laughs> if, I you, have... if you want to skip any, just pass. Yeah, I have never done karaoke, so I don't think I can answer that question. <laughs> okay, wow. That is that on your bucket list or, is, or not at all? I'm not, I guess I just don't think people want to hear my voice. <laughs> I can't sing and I still do karaoke. Okay, number two, if you could have dinner with anyone in the world, dead or alive, who would it be? Wow. Val Kilmer. Who's that? Oh, he's an actor in the US that um well he's in he's been in a lot of movies. Batman. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember his other movies, but he's um he's had a rough turn of events and I just think he's such a soulful person and I would love to meet him that's awesome number three what's a book or movie that has had a profound effect on your life what is that movie about Andromeda um oh I don't know um oh it just came out the second um edition just came out 20 years after the first and they're making the third right now what is it called I bet the listeners will know I bet um, they're screaming at the out loud and we're just like yeah and, and we can't hear uh, I never can remember um the name of the movie where they they get in these pods and they be they play characters um oh. like putting on a suit what is the name of that movie it's not never- Transformers is it it's something else No, they actually, and the movie is actually about Andromeda, but you know, I I don't even think they, they say that in the movie, but it's, it's an actual movie about Andromeda with Andromedans in it. It's not completely factual, but it's pretty close. I I think I know what you mean. Yeah. The the listeners will know what it is. Listeners will know. And when you remember, or any listeners can tell me, just DM me and I'll be like, oh, okay. Get it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right, number four, beach vacation or mountain retreat? You know, right now I'm straddled between the two. Um, I've always been a mountain person, but lately I've discovered how magical the beach is. So um, I like to do both and I'm actually moving to the mountains soon Mm -hmm. too. So I'm going to have access to the mountains full time. And so I probably will be taking beach vacations. (laughs) That sounds amazing. Where are you moving to? Colorado. Wow. How exciting. Yeah. Number five, if you could master any skill instantly, what would it be? You know, it used to be um, equestrian sports because I struggled with that for some reason. Uh Of all the things I've done, I've never have been able to master that. Um, But right now I would love to be able to master the Akashic Records. Oh, yes. I've listened to the audio book. I can't think of the author and I've not quite felt ready to delve in yet, but it's in my energy field. Yeah, it's on your list. Yeah, list, spiritual <laughs> list, bucket list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. OK, next one. OK, number six, early bird or night owl. And how does that shape your day? Oh, I am right in the middle. Like I'm great from 10 to three. Mm -hmm. Um, and otherwise, I mean, I might be up late, but I'm not very functional. And then there are evenings where I am up in the middle of the night too. So Mm -hmm. I might be up from midnight to 4am with against my will, but (laughs) that's just what happens. The reason you need to be. Yeah. So I really don't have any, I don't, I'm in flow. So I don't have control over when I'm operational or not. I just follow the flow and it does vary from day to day. I love that because you're giving us permission, not that we need permission, but of course the human part of us tends to need permission from others to just be as you need to be and do what you need to do and be in flow. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Number seven, can you share a quirky talent or a hobby that you have? Wow. 
They're not so quick fire um, questions, are they? Yeah, they're not so quick and they're really deep. Um, <laughs> a quirky talent. Oh, yes, I do have one. So um, I am uber efficient, uber, uber mm-hmm. efficient. And when I drive a car, I notice the in- intricacies of the region I'm in, the stoplight cycles, the school zones, um, the traffic patterns. And I quickly figure out from point A to B, the fastest, most efficient way to get there. Oh, smart. And yeah. And so my nervous system will memorize that. And if I'm in a car where someone else is driving and they're not following (laughs) the most efficient path, I have a panic attack. Wow. (laughs) That's like six cents type of, well, that's actually hilarious. I've just realized what's came out of my mouth because when we get into this conversation, that's exactly what we're going to be going into. But yeah. that's linked to what you've just shared. I'm intuitively feeling. Yeah. Oh, is it um is it like a psychic you're asking? Is it a yeah, psychic? Do you, yeah. Do you think it's like linked that your awareness of like where everything is, like you're seeing without seeing in a way? Yeah, it's kind of like a um 3D vision or maybe um um Oh, what's, what is it? Um, holographic vision. Yeah. Because also when I'm, when I'm on my bike or if I even drive in the car, when I go through an intersection, I take a holographic picture of it oh. automatically so that if I, that way I don't ever get lost. If I'm coming from the other direction, I'll recognize that, that marker and I'll know where I am. Wow. So that's probably, yeah, you're probably right about that. To it, because we've what is that is clairvoyant, clairsentient, Sentience, clairaudience. 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 Um, I can't remember. There's five, but I can't remember all oh, of them. Okay. Yeah. How do you connect to, I mean, I, I'm, I'm jumping ahead and I'm sorry about that, but I want to know the answer right now. How do you, do you see things then? More? Yeah, I, it comes in a variety of ways and I never know how it's going to come. So I can see things, I could hear things, I could feel things. Mm. Um, and, and I just, I just go with it. So, you know, just, I'm just in the flow with it. So it just depends on whether I see something that's in front of me or whether I'm just told what it is and that it's there. It just depends. I love that. Thank you for sharing Heather. Yeah. All right. Let me get back to the quick fire questions. (laughs) Number eight, what's a piece of advice that you wish you had received earlier in your life? Oh, wow. There's so much I could say here. Um, Life is a journey and it's meant to be fun. You know, um, Mm -hmm. we are here to heal, but the process is meant to be fun. So lighten up a little. Oh yes, I feel that one. Yeah, I like to heal with humor now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's how yeah. I- um, it's it's because I was such a serious person my whole life, so that would have really helped out a lot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. With two left. Number nine. If you had a soundtrack for your life, what would it be? <laughs> wow, I'm not very good with songs. Um, it. It would be like a full throttle song mm. because I'm, I'm full on gas pedal. Usually. Um, I don't, I don't take breaks. Um, I don't, I don't do it the easy way. I, I dig in deep and I go hard. I, so I don't know what song that would be. Yeah. But I feel the vibe of what you're sharing in the vibe yeah. of that it would be. Yeah. And last question, before we dive into this conversation, what do you want people to take away from the conversation we're about to have? Healing is not hard. Mm. We've been told that it's hard. We've been told and, and convinced that healing is a process. And it's not. It's mm. so much easier than that. Oh, I love that. And actually that leads beautifully into me sharing with the listeners why I invited you on. And that is because you speak a lot about healing and a lot of my listeners have experienced past trauma and abuse and the eating disorder tends to come as a coping mechanism for that. Yes. So I know we might not specifically be diving into eating disorders, but healing, especially most of my listeners as well, love animals, love dogs. So everything 
is aligned that way. So my first question to you, and I may look to the side because I have so many different questions and I'm going to have to pick them carefully. The first question, what are canine spirit guides? That's a great question. And nobody knows the answer yet because I myself didn't know the answer when I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. But canine spirit guides are just now becoming um, into our world. They're introducing themselves to us even though they've been with us since the beginning of time, they never needed to be known until now, but they are the intergalactic version of our dogs. So animals exist in all planes, in all dimensions and on all planets, but they take a different form in other places. Only here on earth do they appear the way they appear. So the canine spirit guides are the intergalactic version of our animals, our dogs, who are offering their healing to humanity. Mm. Does it come, do spirit guides for healing purposes only come in the form of a dog or is it all animals? Right now, this group is the canine collective Mm -hmm. Uh, There are all animal kingdoms, but right now this group is coming primarily through the canine collective and they have chosen to come first because of the way we perceive our dogs, because we are so heart driven with our dogs. Our hearts are open with dogs. Mm -hmm. And this is the easiest path to connect with us because our hearts are so yearning and compassionate and just open and willing through our dogs. So so that's why they've chosen to come through first. All of them will be coming through, but the canine is is taking charge in order to kind of let this set in with humanity. And also a lot of people will put their animals first and do things for the animals that they wouldn't do for themselves. Yes, so. that's so interesting. And as you were speaking, actually, I was just reflecting on, as you know, I have dog, I've had dogs all my life. Yeah. Um, the current soul in our lives is we've named him Hero. He was born on 1111. So I, I do like oh. angel numbers and things like that. Yeah. And during my eating disorder recovery, he was really supportive because getting dressed in front of the mirror was a big deal for me when I hated the way I looked. I had so much shame in my body. I even felt shame when he would just be in the same room when I was getting undressed. Mm -hmm. So I allowed myself to practice being undressed in the presence of another soul, which was my dog hero. And then he just loves me unconditionally. He doesn't care what I look like. So even just thinking really specifically to body image there, he was very healing there. And he always reminds me to be in the present moment. I look at him, yeah. he's always in the present moment, always relaxed unless there's a danger or threat of another male dog or whatever. So we can learn so much from them, can't we? Yes, and and what is so fascinating is that they reflect to us what we need to learn. So when there's an issue with the dog, they're actually portraying a message to us usually the issue is not because the dog itself has the issue it's it's a message for us an issue within us that we need to be aware of and take action on and heal wow can you give some examples that you've perhaps worked with before to give a tangible example of I I understand it but I think it'll be really cool if you could share like an example so people can be like oh yeah that makes sense Yeah. So there's a really um, powerful message in my book, a story between me and one of my dogs. And when she came into this world, I was a dog trainer for many years, a professional trainer and, and also a dog breeder. And this dog was from one of my litters and I, we bonded instantly and I knew she was mine. But as she began to mature, like at six or eight weeks old, I realized she had some issues. She -hmm. was not secure in herself. She was not social. She was terrified of other people. And this was heartbreaking to me because I wanted her to be the perfect dog. Right. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what's wrong with this picture? I was so drawn to her. Why is she broken? Yeah. So 
yeah. So mm -hmm. um, I I worked diligently to help her heal this part of herself and to get through it. And I never knew if she actually would or not. I just followed my instincts. And back then I wasn't psychic at all. I didn't realize I was anyway. And so um, I worked really, really hard with her to get her through this. And by the time she was two years old, she had evolved into this magical being that got everyone's attention. And she was so confident that when we competed, she demolished the competition. She won everything I did with her. And she was so devoted to me, but she was just this light being that attracted everybody to her. You, you noticed her when she, when she was in the, in the space. And while I was writing this book, and this dog has been gone since 2015, while I was writing this book, she was explaining to me exactly what that was all about. And she actually um, came to me in a vision and in this vision, I saw a little puppy in the corner underneath some steps. And I was meditating at the time and I didn't recognize this puppy. And at this point, the dogs were coming to me in my meditations and sharing things and, and giving me input for the book. But this puppy, I didn't recognize. And I shifted my gaze to the other side of the room, my, you know, in this vision. And I saw this black panther circling, pacing. And I'm like, wow, that's so beautiful. I got so en enthralled in this beautiful animal here. And I was just uh, taken aback by it. My, my breath got sucked in and everything. And then I looked over again at the puppy and the puppy morphed into this beautiful woman. And mm -hmm. I was like, and then I was equally enthralled in this beautiful woman. Wow. How did that happen? Where did that come from? What's that all about? So then I looked back at the panther and the panther is still circling and she morphs into my dog this dog i'm telling you about apache and i'm like whoa what's going on here and so i said you know what's going on why did this puppy change into a woman who's this woman and apache says she is you mm. so what she was trying to convey to me throughout our ex our experience together was she was showing me literally the path I was about to take. Now, this happened almost 10 years later, or actually um, from the time that we were together, it happened 15 years later. But she was explaining to me the opportunity that my union with this dog was providing me. Hmm. She was trying to communicate with me where I was in my, in my path. I was this scared little child. And yeah. even as a little child, I literally was terrified of the world. I would hide behind my mother. I would never speak to strangers. I didn't have a voice. It took me a long time in my adulthood to develop a voice to speak. I was so conflicted there. Um, but she was showing me the path I needed to take. She was offering me also, these canine guides are off, offer us the healing that we need to get us to that place. So the canine guide that was working through her was Oregon and she's the dog, the guide that's on the cover of my book. And she um, was offering me the ability to connect with my soul and understand who I truly was and give me, provide me with the ability to actually make or um, receive the healing. So I could get there. Wow. Oh so, yeah. That's beautiful and I I had a vision of so the vision you shared with you being the small puppy and then her being the panther and then her teaching you how to step into that beautiful woman yeah. I almost the word inner child came to me so mm -hmm. she was showing you this is just my feeling she was showing you your inner wounded inner child mm -hmm. that needed nurturing reparenting and to flourish into the woman you are today and I'm sure you're you've flourished even more since then yeah 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 absolutely um but when we talk about inner child to me that keeps us to me that's more on the earth plane yeah right and what they work with is something so much bigger than that 
it's more than just the earth plane. It's actually the soul, your, your infinite soul that they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So um, I tend to shy away from those terms just because I don't want to limit the amount of healing. I want it to transcend dimensions and not just stay in this body, stay in this earth plane. Yes, I totally understand that. So I would love to ask, so when I said to you, what do you want people to take away from this podcast? You said that healing actually gets to be simple and easy. Yes. How is that? Because I, I, I've worked with many clients and obviously I've been through and continue to go through my own healing journey. And I am learning, the more evolved I'm becoming, I'm learning that healing gets to be fun and it gets to be easy because I've stopped resisting and fighting, yes. trying to control. Yes. So how would you, dis uh, probably a big question, but how, how does healing get to be fun and quick? Well, what the um, canine guides are sharing is a new frequency that we haven't had access to before. Mm -hmm. And humanity is evolving. We're growing. We're um, becoming more enlightened beings. And so as we do this, we have the capacity to hold more energy, yeah. more frequency. So now that we're evolving, we can tolerate working with this type of frequency, the healing they offer. And, and I know this because this is what they did with me as I wrote the book. When I started writing the book, I thought I was just writing these beautiful stories about my dogs. Mm -hmm. As I wrote the book, they literally came in. They took me through their process step by step. I found out later and they healed me as they showed me specifically parts of myself that needed to be healed. And that healing was instant. It was in a meditation that took 30 minutes and they just healed it. Sometimes they showed me what it was and other times it wasn't important for me to understand what it, what the healing was or what I was being healed from. They just said, don't worry. You're just being healed. Just trust in the process. And they peeled off layers and layers and lifetimes of karma. They even showed me an ancestral pattern that I was trapped within that I had engaged in and agreed to mm -hmm. that, that I was also given the task of healing for the, my entire family line. Um, and then they just healed it instantly. It wasn't a process. I didn't have to do homework. I yeah. didn't have to, uh, I didn't have to, um, go home and think about it. <laughs> yeah. <You know>, um, <laughs> I just be, but just like you said, I didn't resist. I yeah. was willing because in the very beginning they said, do you want the easy path or do you want the long path? And I said, I want the quick and easy. I have waited my entire life for this opportunity. I don't want to drag it down. I don't want to slow it up. Mm -hmm. I, I open myself to it fully without any resistance, without any questioning. And so because of that, it was instant, you know, not everybody can do that because the ego will want to question. And yeah. so that's what happens with my clients. If their ego gets in the way, they'll try to pick apart the experience. They'll try and um, make sense of it in their mind. And the more they try and do that, the more they slow the frequency down. So one thing I like to share with people is when we go through an energetic healing, what happens is energetically, our frequency changes so much that we change address. Yes. We change our vibrational address. So if you don't then go in and, and fill out a change of address form and say, look, guys, I'm not here anymore. I'm over here or up here, then, then number one, people keep trying to, to connect with you in the old address. And in order to connect with them, you have to come back down to that old address. Mm -hmm. And number two, you lack the commitment to hold the new address, to hold the new frequency. So it's important that you commit to that new frequency and you say, this is where I am now. I don't, mm -hmm want to go back to the old address. And once you do that and you step into it, you don't question it. You don't look for the old address anymore. Yeah. You will hold it. It's all about holding the frequency. 
And um, so my clients who understand this concept and are willing to do it progress very quickly. Yeah. The clients that struggle with this because they're really in their mind or they want to understand instead of trust there. This is where faith comes into me. I don't have faith in a religion. I have faith in my own spiritual prog progress and process. This is where faith comes into me. If you've already developed trust for the practitioner and for the process, there should be no questions about it. Right. Yeah. So the more we question it, the more we block it. Yes. Okay. I have two big questions. Okay. The first one is what I'm hearing you say is you aren't healing anything. You're being open and allowing the healing to take place. Yes. That's really key, isn't it? Because yes, yes, key. because we have no, con our ego can't control anything. It, all it does is stop things. Yes. Yeah. So it's not important for us to journal and try and figure it out. We don't need to know that. And that's, an, that's another big question that comes through every time is that we don't need to know the why we don't need to know the when it's not important. Time, time is elusive anyway. It, it's an illusion. So let that go you know, just, yeah. just allow the healing. And it's that simple. Wow. I and love their, their frequency is very, very strong. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's stronger than anything I've ever worked with. And so um, some people can handle it and some people can't. And I'm always instructed, you know, whether this person is ready to receive the healing or whether they're not. Um, and because the, the frequency is so powerful I actually um, record the healing portion of the sessions with my clients and the guides will instruct them how many times a day to listen to it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need to listen to it while you were asleep. So the ego's out of the way Yes, <laughs> and you can get more powerful healing that way because it, it actually reaches into your soul and it re um, calibrates mm -hmm. your soul connection. It, it, it's like nothing I've ever worked with before. Wow. And my second question around that, when you allow and when you were healed and you just allowed and surrendered and trusted that, you talked about the new address. Uh -huh. Did it feel uncomfortable? Because this is my personal experience with healing. I didn't have it the experience that you had. My new normal, which was actually more pleasant and safe and loving, felt not normal. And I wanted to go back to unconsciously not consciously I wanted to go back to the abuse that was familiar yes yes yeah. that's that's part of it and the the things the thing that's so hard for us humans to understand is that and this is the hardest place to exist the, this earth plane yeah. um but when we are uncomfortable this is our opportunity for transformation so, so many of us avoid the discomfort. Yes. So we, we don't want to make changes because it's hard. Yeah. We don't want to get out of abusive relationships because it's hard. But let me tell you, an abusive relationship is a lot more uncomfortable than the discomfort you're going to experience when you leave. Right. So our ego doesn't understand that. Um, but we must be able, or we must be willing to get uncomfortable to make a change. And we see this in athletes all the time. Athletes are love to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's part of the competition of competing is to get as uncomfortable as you can and push through it. Right. Yes. So it's kind of the same with spiritual growth. Get in there, do what, what you think is hard because that's an illusion. Yeah. Right. The illusion is you, your ego thinks it's going to be hard. So it, it tries to um, convince you not to do it, but really as you move into the, the discomfort, that's when you align with your soul mm -hmm. and that's when your soul path takes over and says, here I am, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And what you thought was going to be hard is actually not so hard because you have your own soul carrying you through it. Yes. Oh my gosh. I resonate so deeply, Heather, because especially talking to eating disorder recovery, the fearful thing is, especially if someone has anorexia, like I did, is eating the food it's such a simple behavior but of course the trauma that created it everything that's going on up here it feels like the hardest thing in the world 
Yes. But I chose to leave my familiar hell to yes. go to step towards an unfamiliar heaven. And like yes. you said, because it was my soul's path, it there was something pulling me even through the fear. And then now I, I'm going to go as far as saying I love being uncomfortable because I know if the other side is going to be more freedom, more peace. Mm-hmm. And more trust. And I look forward to that. So I embrace it now. Yeah. And that's, and that's the courage and the faith yes. that yes. you have. You have, it's, that's your blind faith. you you just knew there was something there yes. that was calling you. And, and to me, you know, I don't, I don't have faith in, in a book. Mm-hmm. I don't have faith in a religion. That's the faith I have is in my own soul. You know, that's because we are all connected. Yes. We are all part of, of God's source. That that's where the faith needs, in my opinion, needs to be funneled in order to heal humanity. Um, Cause we're not separated. We are all one. But one thing I want to point out to your description is what I've discovered through my healing is that what makes us so uncomfortable and wanting to put things in our mouth or filling our space or surrounding people, um, surrounding ourselves with people who, who, um, don't support us or, or, or nurture us is, um, the negative or, um, let's not say negative. Let's say the lower energy vibrations that reside within us because we're constantly trying to fill ourselves with something to make that better. Yes. And another thing with trauma, when we have trauma, the trauma causes us to lose a part of ourselves. So whatever the trauma is, it could be an accident. It could be um, a death. It could be um, a disease. It could be um, a, a, you know, a person mistreating us, whatever that trauma is. When we have the trauma, a part of ourselves is removed Mm -hmm. from our physical soul body. And it, it stays in that place where the trauma was created. And so we have a hole within us Yeah, and that hole now is occupied by all the lower vibrational energy that created the trauma. Yes. So then we go through our lives trying to find ourselves. Yes. That's what I did until I was 30. And then eventually I found spirituality and then everything changed. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, so part of healing is removing the lower vibrational energies. And this is something that the guides do very quickly. They identify and remove it for you. They remove that, that lower vibration, take it out, Mm -hmm. um, dissolve it. And then now more of your own soul energy can come back to Mm -hmm. you. And it just leaves you feeling so much more peaceful and so much more complete yeah. You know, you, we don't realize how incomplete we are. We're walking around like Swiss cheese. Yes, yes. I totally understand that feeling. Yeah. So I said um, before I started healing, when I was about 28, I'm 36 now, I started my healing journey at 30. I said out loud to my friend, it's like I'm searching for something and I don't know what I'm searching for. Yeah. And it's not in food. It's not in restriction. It's not in sex. It's not but I'm, there's something missing. And I I didn't have the language or the spirituality understanding of what that meant, but exactly as you're describing now, that's exactly what it, what it was. So when you say a part of our soul leaves or stays at the, the site of when the trauma happened, when you remove the, or when you're healed and the healing takes place and it removes the lower vibrations within you, does that part of you come back or is it just healed naturally where you are does that question make sense yeah so once the the lower vibration is removed then now you have space for that soul particle to come back yes but it doesn't until that is removed it's occupying space where your soul particle can't be yes so it has to be removed dissolved send back to source to be recycled in love and light Yes. And then your soul can occupy more of you. Yeah. Our, our bodies, these physical bodies really only um, in, in case a very small portion of our soul energy. Mm. So, so the, the small portion that we do have gets even more fractured with trauma yeah. and we become these little robots 
that walk around in total agitation Mm -hmm. because we know we're not right. Yes. We know we're not full. We know there's something missing. So the, the need to just, you know, you know, fill yourself with food, try and replace that agitation with something. I mean, you were searching the you you psychically knew something was missing and the agitation was creating a behavior that was trying to desperately find a way to fill the void. Yeah. Which is self-loving in a way. I mean, it wasn't the behaviors I was choosing to do, but ultimately the source, which is what I believe all there is, is love. Honestly, there's yeah. fear, but then that's created by the ego. It's not real. Yeah. Um, so it's the in lack like, of love. Yeah. yeah. So it's like with the, um, if there's darkness, all you do is turn the light on. So there is no such thing as darkness. It's just absence from the light. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. it's actually self-loving of me from the depth of the behavior, from the root of it, to try and find something to fill me up again. Because I loved myself so much and I love myself so much. I was unaware of this at the time that I wanted to, to heal me somehow. But yeah. I don't heal me. I allow myself to be healed through... Yeah, spiritual awakening and all of that. So, oh my gosh, I have so many questions around this. Well, <laughs> I want to share something, and this um, can be linked to canines actually. And of course, you can ask them. I can't. Well, I'm saying I can't. That's probably limiting myself. But I had someone message me last week, and I met her in England three years ago, and I met her son who was six at the time. And it was very random because I was lost. I didn't know who she was. She picked me up and she dropped me back off home. Anyway, I I sat next to her son in the car in the back. And he said to her the other the other week, he said, mommy, that was that girl a dream. And she said, what what do you mean? What girl? He said, the girl we picked up with the long blonde hair. And she said, oh, no, that was a real girl. And he said, she was yellow, wasn't she, mommy? She was all glowing yellow. And I was like, that's she he saw my aura yeah yeah and my question is can children see auras and can canines see auras around us well yeah I mean children are still very closely connected to their divine source Mm -hmm. until the human the adults tell them that it's not real it doesn't exist yeah so So yes, they're very connected. They don't completely separate from that for many years after they come in their bodies, their physical bodies. Um, And I describe a, a, a story about my childhood where I was experiencing that. And I was told you're seeing things. It's not real. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so in an, in an effort to, to be accepted, we give it up. Yes. You know, uh, cause we don't want our parents to tell us we're crazy or we're making up lies. So yeah. Um, unless you're in a family where that's supported and nurtured, mm-hmm. it, it becomes disconnected. Um, mm-hmm. but our dogs are part of our soul family. Uh, I thought me and me and my husband literally had this conversation yesterday that we're a soul family and hero, our dog, do, do, can they choose to be humans in different in past, yeah. I say past lives because everything's happening all at once but yeah. they can choose to be humans too they don't just choose to come through the dogs well yeah I mean it depends some people will incarnate as dogs okay and then you have um the true animal kingdom that comes through as a dog so it just varies I mean there's so there's no black and white mm-hmm. in the cosmos you yeah. know the, it, our in our soul energy might choose to just be energy Yes. Not be attached to anything. We might choose to be a rock. We might choose to be a tree or, or water. You know, we might be on many different planets at one time as a humanoid or as an animaloid. I mean, there, there's no absolute. So anything is possible. Anything you can imagine is possible. Yes. Yes. And my question, and I've always wondered this, and I have an intuitive feeling that the answer is yes, but I'm curious if it's my ego wanting it to be yes or my soul. So when we leave this physical body and we go into back to where we came from, do you think, or more so, do you feel that we are aware of who we are without being connected to the life we've just had, but we're, we're aware of everything. We're not just energy blobbing around. We're intelligent. Oh yeah. Yeah. We know much more than we know now for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, let me say this, because there are cases where that's not true. 
Okay. So um, what I've seen and what I've been told is that the souls that have sort of drunk the Kool-Aid here mm -hmm. and been trapped in the circle of the planet Earth and um, they're believing what they're being told um, uh, as far as having to earn the right to go to heaven or they're going to be judged for their experience here. Yeah. They're easily manipulated and they never make it back to source. They just become completely recycled back to earth. Right. So they never fully get to that point because they've been told there's someone waiting to judge them. You know, we've all heard the fables. We're going to go to the, the iron gates and there's mm -hmm. going to be someone there checking our past. Well, if you really believe that, then that's true for you. Yes. So you're, you're going to have, you're going to leave your, your body and only get to the astral plane. And someone's going to be there waiting for you. And they're going to say, you know what? You didn't quite get it right. Go right back. Yeah. And you will. Yeah. So it totally, that's why it's so important that, um, and that's why the star seeds are here now to try and, oh, uh, you know, elevate awareness and say, look, guys, this is not real. Yeah. You've been lied to. It's not true. You have every right to be fully connected to divine source on your own, not through somebody else. No one's judging you. There's no right. There's no wrong. There's no, you know, um, light. There's no dark, you know, just like you said, there's all light, but, um, you know, those people who know differently. Yes. The answer to your question is yes. Yes. Um, but it's easy to be manipulated here on this earth plane. So some people, the answer is no, they will not realize that's an option and they will be coerced into just coming right back. Because we attract in physical form and what I'm hearing you saying after physical form, we attract what we believe. We, we live what we believe. Mm -hmm. The belief yes. is so powerful. So I'm curious, Heather, when did you know that you were psychic? I know everyone is, but you obviously have a, a strong gift in this lifetime. What was your experience and was it with a canine originally? Well, that's a fascinating story because I didn't wake up until I wrote this book last year in 2022. Wow. Yeah. And then it just came pouring in. Hmm. So, um, and I was thrust into the position of master when I didn't even really understand what I was doing. When hmm. I wrote the book, I thought, oh, this is great. I'm going to write a book. You know, people are going to buy it. I had, I thought that was into the story, Right. And it wasn't until six months after the book came out that I realized it's not about the book. It's about the healing mm. that I experienced while I was writing the book. This is my job mm. now to deliver this healing to humanity. So it's not like it was a clear cut. Oh, guess what? You're going to do this and this is going to happen. It sort of evolved. So the more I opened up, the more I expanded, the more I could see the truth. Mm. Wow. And so how can, so the listeners who have dogs at home um, and they're in their life for a reason, right? They're part of the soul family. Yeah. Is there a way that they can connect on a deeper level with the healing that the dog can offer them? Yeah. Um, so I want to be, just clarify something before I answer that question. We're what I deal with is not the um, specific soul of the dog. Mm -hmm. So that's different. So that would be more of an animal communicator, which they've blocked me from. Like, I don't like literally communicate with animals because there's too many people that do that already. That's, yes. they don't want me to spend time there. So yeah. what I communicate with are these intergalactic Coming um, through. energies that come through them. Yes. Okay. So, um, so it's, obviously animals are all telepathic. I say obviously, but may, maybe people don't know that, but animals are telepathic. We are designed to be telepathic. Our DNA got changed. So yes, we're not I read connected that with that. The dawn. Yeah. We're mm -hmm. supposed to have 12 strands of DNA, not just two. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so that's changing. Our DNA is evolving. I've had several DNA upgrades over the last year and a half and in order to help me do my job better. So even though um, on the earth plane and in our earth brain our scientifically, we can't see that Yes, our DNA is changing and shifting as long as we are 
open to that. So the people who don't want that to happen, that won't happen. The people who want to evolve, if you ask for it, it will happen. Yeah. Um, but so, um, to answer your question, in order to connect with your dog the, or even these entities, the first thing that has to happen is that you have to heal. It's always number one. So those um, lower vibrational frequencies that you're holding within your energetic field, it could be from trauma, it could be from memories, it could be from um, things that you tell yourself that aren't true. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be from your imagination. You know, the things that we imagine become true. Yes. So um, that has to be healed so that more of your higher vibration can come through. And it's with this higher vibration that we elevate our frequency and we can get into a higher dimension and actually see, hear, and feel. Yes. How would someone go about healing without being able to instantly connect to what's coming through the canine spirit guides to help us? Does that question make sense? So they want to yeah. connect, they need to heal first and able to be higher vibrations and be open and allowing. It's almost like the chicken and the egg. Yeah, well, I provide that service um, in private sessions and also in groups. And then I also, in my podcast, I offer some of that healing with my um, listeners. So when I do podcasts, I'm bringing through channeled messages from the canine guides, and then they offer healing around that subject d during the podcast. So that's one way they can do it. Um, another way is, you know, I have private sessions where we specifically dig into each person's um, story and and they're they're told what needs to be um, healed and what needs to be relieved and and then that healing happens right then and there also i'm doing group events where the the you know the same concept happens only it's in a group environment um and the first thing i tell people when they want to learn and access this skill is meditation is a great way to learn to make this connection. And that's how I began is through meditation. I don't like to meditate. So I know, I know what people's <laughs> resistance is to that because yes. I, I'm a physical person. I like to, to do things and move and, um, being an athlete, you know, that's, I didn't want to sit still, but the message they had me bring forward through meditation. And I do have a meditation course on my website is that it's not about, sitting for a period of time and zeroing out your mind mm -hmm. our mind can be a big assistance to us if we learn how to use it and um so when i do meditation it's not to sit there aimlessly and do nothing i use my mind in meditation to mm -hmm. actually um take me places mm -hmm. to learn how to ask questions and receive answers to connect to my higher self to travel to other dimensions so when i teach meditation i'm i'm number one i'm bringing through a frequency to assist you when we're yes. doing meditation together so it's not like you're just doing a meditation yes. you're actually receiving a frequency to assist in the process but i'm also teaching you how to use meditation as a springboard into your other gifts Mm. wow and so what's your podcast called because I've got your show notes to put on and I've got your website and your YouTube is it in the pack that you sent me and I've obviously just not read it properly well it's on my YouTube channel okay oh great yeah yeah it's called howling at the moon with the canine guides mm -hmm. I love that so I'll post everything there yeah. and before I ask specifically how people can work with you even though you've shared a little bit is there anything that I've not asked you Heather that you would that you feel would like to come through you to the listeners um yeah so on the subject of healing I think it's important that people understand how far I've come because I know it's important that uh, people understand that you can relate to them. Mm -hmm. And my journey has been incredibly tough and it's all in my book. So the, the book is about 10 of my dogs. I shared my life with which canine spirit guides, the dogs aligned with and were trying to communicate with me through them. But it's also an autobiography because they showed me from the time I was four years old up until now, 
exactly how they were trying to communicate with me through that dog at that point in my life. And these guides will systematically be present based on what you need at that moment. So each guide has a different skill. Yes. There are four guides in this book, the first book, and they call themselves the core four. Mm -hmm. There will be eight guides in the next book. They call themselves the essential eight, but they have systematically broken it up into um, layers and levels to help humanity heal Mm -hmm. at the level we're ready for. Yes. Um, So my life was not fun at all. Matter of fact, I got when, when was I, I was, um, in my twenties and there was an exit point. It was about halfway through and my, um, council of guides took me out during a surgery and they said, this is tough. Are you sure you want to keep going? And I said, I said, I don't know how much longer do I have to do this? (laughs) (laughs) How much longer do I have to sofa? (laughs) Yeah. And, and, and the point they were here to remind me was it's going to be a while. It's going to be another half, you know, another 25 years before you're able to be activated to do what you came here to do. Mm. And it was another 25 years of not very much fun. Um, Now I did have some joy and I had some people in my life that were real angels, but Mm for the majority of it, as you read the book, it's going to be a little bit difficult to read because you're going to feel how much I had to get through to get where I am now. But that's an an important part of the story is everything happens for a reason. And when you, when I wrote the book, they instructed me specifically what the reason was, what the healing was I needed at that moment, what they were trying to share with me so that we now know we'll be able to recognize it in our own life. So um, people are resonating with the book, whether they realize it or not, because it will trigger you. It will make you sad. It will make you angry. It will make you agitated, or it might make you fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So if you're not ready for the frequency in the book, you're going to fall asleep because your nervous system can't handle it. Yes. Keep reading it. And if you have it on audible, Listen to it at night. Fall Ooh, asleep I'm an audible girl. I'm getting that the moment this call finishes. I love to be read. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of times they will instruct clients that I work with to listen to certain chapters while they sleep at night yeah. because the frequency in the chat and the in the healing will come through those chapters. So so if there's a if there is something that lights you up in the book, work with that section meditate over it, keep reading it and reading it and reading it until whatever is churning inside of you, whatever's making you angry comes up to the surface because that's what the book is doing. That's the purpose of the book. So don't get mad at me for my story. (laughs) Well, you're a mirror for what's really going on inside of us, aren't you? So your words, your frequency, the help you've had to, to write this book, it's all poking at the things that were unconsciously asking to be poked at when we're ready for them yeah yeah so so that agitation is is for a reason you're you're ready to see it now so it's bringing it to the surface so that's and that's what needs in in a session with with a um a client that's what we'd be working on that's what the guides would be healing that person from wow wow this has been incredible heather how so I know you said you have groups you do you do everything online and yes. um, my audience are all around the world and you're moving as well and yes. do people reach out is there a form on your website like how can people get in contact with you if they're really wanting to work with you yeah so um if you go to my website there's a couple of free um there's a free meditation from one of the canine guides that's on there that you can download and use there's also a free book about how your own dog might be um, working with the canine guides with you. Um, You can schedule a private session if that's what you want to do, or um, you can send me a message through my page if you have other questions. And I do have um, an introductory session. If people think they want to engage in this type of healing, they're not quite really sure. So we can also set that up as well. Um, And then 
there's always events. There's always events on my webpage. So check those out. I've got one coming up in March. That's going to be a big group event and everything I do is virtual so that the world has access to it. Yeah. Cause frequency knows no space nor time. No, no. Yeah. And it's, a, it's amazing. It's just amazing. The, the amount of healing that, that they bring through for a group has just been, it blows my mind. I, Every time I work with these canine guides, they do something completely different. They teach me something completely different about what's possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm just flabbergasted and total awe. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be of service. Wow. I'm so grateful for you taking the time to come and share your wisdom and your energy with me and with my audience. Heather. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Victoria. I've loved this, this space. I mean, I really love your energy and everything that you're doing and all that you've come through and, and your own path to your own light. It's, it's extraordinary. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you. I received that. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. And listeners, we will see you. Well, I will see you next week. Much love.